Hello and welcome to Makeup with the Pearl. I am Rita Ekbenyo and today we're going to be doing a beginner's highlight and contour. It's going to be so exciting. You thought it was difficult, right? Well, we're simplifying the entire process right here today. You don't want to miss it. Let's get right into it. So we're ready to start our beginner's highlight and contour. And my model today is Moyo. How are you? Very well. Great. So we're going right into it. First step for our beginner's highlight and contour is priming the face. It's important that before you put any kind of foundation on the face or any kind of cream product, you must put a primer. And the kind of primer you use is dependent on the skin type of the client that you're working with or on yourself. So, because Moyo is oily, and how do I know this? Her skin is acne prone. And oil is just the right environment that acne requires to flourish in. If you find that your skin is acne prone, it's proof that your skin is oily. Because acne does well in an oily environment. So I'm going to go onto her areas where she has a lot of the oil, which is her T-zone, which is across her forehead, the bridge of her nose, just under her nose and right under her chin. Next step, we're going straight into our eyebrows. So I've combed out her brows with the eyebrow brush. I have a very soft eyebrow pencil. Why I choose the eyebrow pencil like this is because it allows me to move without the fear of having too much color or too much density. I'm going for a natural look, so I'm filling in very naturally, softly, to create the illusion of hair without overdoing it. So if you do prefer a bolder look, it's fine. You can go on with that as well. So I'm filling in very naturally. I move on to the next brow and I repeat the same. Remember that the whole idea with the eyebrow is not to draw but to fill in to create the illusion of hair. Choosing the eye right eyebrow pencil is very important for getting, you know, the right definition and creating the right kind of natural fullness or otherwise for your eyebrow shape. Next step is to knit in our eyebrow area which you may call a concealer or a highlighter, whichever term works best for you. I'm going in with a cream product, just to knit in her eyebrow area. Why the knitting is key is that, you know, it helps to make the entire eyebrow area neater. That way our eyebrow is able to stand out, drawing the required attention to the frame of the face. I repeat the same process on the second brow. We need to bear in mind as we walk on the brows that the eyebrows are not twins. They are just set side by side. So we can only try to make it look as similar as possible, but the way we are created, they may be a bit of difference and that's fine. I've often been asked about knitting the top of your brows. If you find that you're still fresh on learning how to line and fill in your eyebrows and you don't quite have a steady hand, yes, you will need to go over your brows and neatly define the shape that you are hoping to achieve. So I'm going to go into the top of the brows and I'm going to knit in it. This is just to share with us how it is done. Going to go into the second brow on the other side. So what this does for you is it allows your eyebrows look as close to perfect as you want it to. So there we have it with our brows. Next, we're going to put on our foundation. It's important that you pick out the right shape for your skin. 
and if you have the liberty of having several products it's great to mix and match colors until you get the exact shade for your skin tone because Moyo's skin has a bit of post acne mark our foundation will need to be able to conceal most of these marks and give her you know a flawless finish We also need to bear in mind that not because we're trying to conceal the, mark, the marks, we shouldn't be compelled to create a mask-like finish with our foundation. It's important that while we work with our foundation, we keep it as natural looking as possible. Not forgetting to blend into the outer part of the neck, giving us a very natural coverage. I'm moving in to the next part of the face, repeating the same process, not forgetting to go around the side of the face in long sideways strokes, allowing you to cover the side of the neck, the outside side of the ears, to create uniformity and not to create a mask. Okay, so what our foundation has been able to do here quite effectively with the proper blending skills is we're able to conceal the post acne spots. We have our foundation in place. We have our eyebrows in place. Next step is our contouring. Now you can decide on your product of choice. It can be cream or liquid. But for the contouring, you need a product or whatever you decide on, cream or liquid, that is two to three shades darker than your usual tone. Because the whole idea with contouring is to suck in certain areas, and then the highlighting actually helps to project certain areas. So what the contouring does is I add definition to angles of the face that you want to define. So what we're going to be doing today is I've picked a contouring product that is three shades darker than Moyo's skin tone, and come with me, I'll show you how it's done. You want to look in finding areas of the face to contour. It's important that you turn the face to the side. Now, I usually say this, that God has given us a natural you know, background to contour and highlight. Because if you look at your face without any makeup on, you find certain areas are you know, defined, certain areas project. That's like a guide for the areas that you, know, you should be contouring and you should be highlighting. So the side of the face, you see there's a natural, you know, dip in, if you will. It's like here naturally goes in. I'm just going to go and mimic that a bit further with my product. Starting from the outer corner of the ear. It depends on how long or how defined you want your face to, to be. If I go all the way further to the side of her mouth, I'm really going to be pulling her face in because the dark colors define and pull in. The brighter highlighting colors project. That's the simple law for highlighting and contouring. So I'm going in, and we don't want to do anything too dramatic with her contouring, so I'll stop right there. Another part of the face that we just love to define is the sides of the nose. Everyone loves a good pointed nose, correct? All right, so I'm just going to go to the sides of the nose and I'm drawing a straight line, going to the other side and repeating the same. So remember that with contouring is bringing definition to certain parts of the face and with highlighting is projecting. That's the simple law that guides contouring and highlighting. So we've put for definition, just to create a more defined look to her face, we've put the contouring product on the side. Same on the side of the nose, nothing like a great pointed nose, right? All right, so now slim, or how pointed you want the nose to be, determines where you keep your definition marks. If we bring the marks too close, we're going to have a really thin looking definition in the end. But because we don't want to create something that may almost look cartoonish by the time we're done, we're going to keep it 
as natural looking as possible. So we want some definition, some slimness, but we don't want to exaggerate it. Cut those lines right underneath with another line because if we don't create that nice, you know, vertical line right across like that, that's connecting the two lines you've created on the bridge of the nose. What you are doing invariably is you are making the nose appear like it's going all the way down. So what happens is that you now have like a crooked nose by the time you're done. Or you know, when you look at your pictures, it now looks like the nose is overly extensive and that was not look what you're looking to create. Remember that with everything you put on your face with makeup, you're creating something. Because once the eyes hit your face, what we see is, you know, what you've been able to interpret with your work. So we're going still with our contouring definition product and we're putting some lines on the side of her face. Because naturally, when you don't have any makeup on, you'll find that your temples and the top of your forehead and the sides, you'll find that the, that complexion is a bit different from the complexion in the middle of your face. You'll find that the middle of your face is brighter. That's just the way we were created. So we're just going to mimic that for definition. Going to the outer corner as well. We all have a natural shadow under the jaw. So I'm just going in there to just further mimic what already is happening with nature. So I'm going in here as well and I'm putting that tip product there just to give her jaw a lift. Moya, why are you laughing? <laughs> <laughs> Next step is our highlighting product. So anywhere on the face that we want to project, we're going to use a highlighter. And your highlighter can be a cream or a liquid product, but it must be two, not more than two or three shades lighter than your original tone. And with blending in the right way, it will come together and look just like your tone and give you just the right amount of highlight without overdoing it. So I'm going in with the highlighter under her eyes. So I've put our highlighter everywhere on her face that I plan to accentuate and make pop. So we have the highlighter under her eyes, we have a bit on the T-zone of her face, which is her forehead, on the bridge of her nose, the cupid of her lip, and just on her chin. And then next step is to blend everything together. Let's watch our blending carefully so we understand how the highlighting and contouring works. So I first start with our contouring colors. Buffing and blending in. Please notice that I am not blending away to disrupt, you know, the color that we have already put here. I'm buffing into the skin at the same time blending lightly upward. The next area where I have a definition color, blending a little bit downward just to create that nice shadow under the jaw, the side of the face, and blending it into her hairline because it's a rich dark color. It, ha it doesn't cake her hairline and will not look masky in any way. If it was a lighter color, then there would be a problem. I'm going to repeat the same on the other side. I'm going to the sides of the nose. So what I've done is, you can actually use a smaller brush for this. If you have a regular size brush as so, you can actually make it smaller by tapering the bristle of the brush, holding it together like so. The whole idea is we're trying to restrict its movement. Because if we go in with the full brush like this, it may take products from where we have it to where we don't want it. So this allows us to control it. And then we buff it sideways. All right. So now we're going to go in and blend our highlighter. 
blending in, keeping the highlighter where we've put it in the first place. So we've done our basic highlighting and contouring with our cream products. Now we're going to go in to set everything that we've used a cream product. Everywhere, to set everywhere we have used a cream product by using a dry product. So we're going to go in with our powder. So the same principle that we've used with the cream product is the same principle that we use with the dry product as well. The same shade of powder we've used in the light areas, then we use the same shade of dark powder we've used in the dark areas to set. So now I'm going over the light areas. We're setting the entire face lightly. I'm going to set her under eye area as well. So we're going to finish off her look with a very light dusting of eyeshadow. We're using something light and bronzy because today it's all about her skin. It's not about her eyes. We'll put a thin coat of mascara. We're going to top off this look or wrap it off with a very light coating of lip gloss because it's all about the skin today. So there you have it, our beginner's highlight and contour. Don't forget, your contouring is for definition and your highlighting is for projecting. So if you know that there are angles of your face that you'd like to define, perhaps for a longer look, then you put your contouring around that area like I showed you. Your highlighting are for areas that you want to stand out and bring attention to. So enjoy doing your highlighting and contouring. So you see, it wasn't as difficult as you thought in the first place. So stay tuned with us as you learn more tips, tricks and hacks on Makeup with the Pro. From me for, for now, it's bye-bye.